Mortgage, Dallas Cowboys Legends Show. Tony Dorsett has scored his first touchdown as a pro. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Tony Hill, touchdown, Tony Hill. Brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mahindra Tractors. Get the best seven-year warranty in Texas. And by SWBC Mortgage. Prepare to win. Call SWBC for all your insurance needs. Now your hosts, Mickey Spagnola and Bill Jones. Oh, we've got a good one tonight here on our Dallas Cowboys Legends Show, brought to you by SWBC Mortgage. We are at the Cowboys Club at Ford Center. I'm Mickey Spagnola. Bill Jones hopefully will be along in a moment. He's been kind of pulled away for another duty he has here interviewing Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett. We've got a very nice crowd here. Uh, be on Cowboys radio network stations all around the network, and you can watch us live uh, on DallasCowboys.com. We're streaming, and we've got a heck of a guest tonight with us. The man, Hall of Famer, Ring of Honor, and we're honored to have Tony Dorsett with us, so let's welcome him in. Good to see you. Mickey, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Good to see you moving around. You're looking good, looking fit. Well, I mean, uh, I, I come up here at the Cowboys Fit to get to get fit. Oh, so, well, know, we got uh, paid uh, not, uh, advertisement uh, <laughs> right there, right? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've always been one of those guys that uh, I would always, you know, I like to look good in my clothes. <laughs> so, so I've always going to work out. Well, good. So you, so you come out here, so you're kind of familiar with this uh, area right here, right? Well, yes. I mean, I, I was familiar with the Frisco area anyway. You know, I used to live up here. Did you uh, really? For about 10, 10 years or so. But, and, and when the Cowboys moved in, I was living in this, uh, um, God, what's it, what's it? Mm, the gated community up there right off of, off of Starwood. Starwood. Star, Starwood. Starwood. I was living in Starwood for, for about 10 years or so. And then all of a sudden, you know, we had the guardhouse and all that. But yeah. all of a sudden... They weren't doing their job, and my, you know, I was people were ringing my door every other day, every other minute. Um, Still knew who I, you I, were, I, huh? I was traveling a lot, and, and but I didn't like that. Pro I didn't want that problem, you know. My, I, my yeah. wife and daughters here at the house, and I'm like, man, we got to do something. So we moved back south. So you were out here when this was kind of the country. Yes, I sure was. <laughs> <laughs> I sure was. <laughs> and it's it, not it that it anymore, it was is country it? Too, trust me. Not anymore. Well, we've got Tony for uh, the next hour here. Uh, we also have Smacker Miles. She'll be walking around with a wireless mic. So if anybody here wants to ask a question, uh, feel free, and we'll get Tony answering anything you guys want to ask. And uh, it was a good Monday night for the Dallas Cowboys. I assume you still pay attention to the games? Uh, a little bit. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's always good to see the Cowboys win. Um, uh, the, you know, I've... I've uh, that's that's something that's going to always be in me. You know, I'm a football fan from the word go. Um, I don't get the chance because I have I have children, and some of the activities that they have obviously are on, on the weekends, and I I don't get a chance to 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 go to the games as often as I used to. But I'm a big time fan. And you watch on TV? Absolutely. Big fan of Ezekiel Elliott? Uh, big time. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Dak. Let me tell you, Dak is all that. <laughs> I like Dak. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have to dive in the end zone and do a flip like he did Monday uh, night? No, I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hazardous to your health, man. Right? <laughs> I can't do that. It's not recommended, right? Not at all. So tell me this, because, you know, the things are a little different the first three games uh, for Zeke this year as a running back. Mm -hmm. So once the word's out on you, it, does it, it gets tougher, like everybody's going to say, oh. okay, you're not doing that to me anymore. Oh, absolutely. You become a marked man, and, and everybody knows that. You, know, I mean, you're obviously offensively, you know, if you get your running game going, you're going to be very uh, – should be very successful uh, through the year as well. So Zeke has, uh, you know, has had a great, great – first year here and it's made up put up a lot of yards and so uh, every defense that comes into town or w w if they go out of town you know one of them the focal points offensively obviously is to stop him if you stop him you can really start slow down that offense yeah and you, I mean you had a great rookie year you rushed for a thousand yards and as I remember I think you told me this last time you were with us mm -hmm. you really weren't starting all that much your rookie no, year I, either no I didn't start until the 10th game of the season so what was Tom doing what's the deal 
messing with my head. <laughs> <laughs> messing with my head. It was like you're a rookie. Yeah, yeah. He he uh he he thought that in 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 you know some of his strange ways. I guess he thought that I got too big, too fast, so to speak. You know, I came right. in and there was Heisman a Heisman Trophy uh, winner, yeah. second pick in national, the draft, national championship. Yeah. Uh, you know, second person picked in the draft, and I'm coming down here. And uh, they've, they've, I mean, I was coming here with an, an awe because, you know, you got Starbuck, Pearson, Dupree, you know, you got all the, uh, Rayfield Wright, I could go on and on and on. And and I was just trying to fit in, get in what I could fit in. And uh, obviously, uh, Coach Landry just tried to <laughs> pull, just corral me just a little bit, I guess, right. slow me down, you know. Um, and, and, and it worked. He did, he did a good job with it. A young Tony Dorsett, did he need to be corralled? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That's pretty good. Yeah. I could see Tom. So do, do you remember the first time you met Tom? Yeah, I remember my first meeting with him um, uh, when we came in after the draft. And the most surprising thing to me was I didn't know he was bald-headed. And so when I, you know, he did the fedora on, and all, he's got, he's on, he's got right? the fedora on and all this stuff. So I go into his locker room, and go, I mean, to the office, as I say, down to 6160, whatever else. Uh, uh, Off of Central there? Yeah, Central. Yeah. First. But anyway, and and, and I, I, I kind of like, ah, oh, that, <laughs> that's why he wears that hat. <laughs> <laughs> Covering up that bald head. But, uh, yeah, I was I was shocked that he was, you know, he was bald headed. But um, what a great coach. What a great man. What did he have to say to you when you first showed up? Well, you know, he, he didn't say a whole lot. You know, for one, he thought he, I would be a little bit bigger than what I was. That's funny. Uh, Somebody just uh, told me that tonight when they saw you. Yeah. I thought he'd be a little bit bigger than <laughs> yeah. he is. Yeah, especially that I'm, now that I'm retired. You know, right. I'm just going to go out and eat and drink right. and be merry. Yeah, you've done but, good. Uh, yeah, I, I like to think so anyway. But, uh, you know, Tom Landry was, you know, I had the opportunity to go and visit with him and talk with him. And I, I never forget because I didn't start into the 10th game of the season. And I was getting down on myself. You know, I was feeling bad. I thought I was going to come in here. You know, with all the hoopla that was uh, was a part of my, my my arrival, and all of a sudden, the man kind of tamed me a little bit. He slowed me down. He he wasn't gonna put me out there, and and I and I and I respect it to this day because of the fact that the offense that we had, we had so many plays and so many formations. It was really mind-boggling to me, man. It was it was really I couldn't become the I wasn't the runner that I was because I went instinctive because I was always thinking about. What formation? Where I got to go? Because we had to shift. Right. You know, we had to do all that yeah. shifting, and <laughs> I had to do. If you're weak side back, you got to shift twice. Strong side back once, and I was like, "Oh my God!" But uh, I finally, finally got it together. Yeah. So who was starting in front of you? Uh, uh, Doug Dennison. Doug Dennison. Doug Dennison. Yeah. He should be very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doug Dennison. There was another guy too. They all turned. I can't. I can't remember his name. It's been so long ago. But uh, yeah, and uh, Doug, you know, because. When I saw the Cowboys from afar when I was in college, you know, I said, you know, I, w I would love to play for the Dallas Cowboys because I like I like their style. I like I like the formations and doing all that kind of stuff. I said, man, this is pretty cool. You know, wouldn't that be nice if I could be, you know, end up being a Dallas Cowboy? But, um, you know, being drafted as high as I was, I said, man, this would never happen. It would never happen. You know, I, I expected to be one of the um, – uh, uh, we had to, with Tampa Bay and, and, and Seattle coming into Legacy. Right. Seattle had my rights. Right. Second and, pick in the draft, yeah, right? And yeah, they had my rights. And somehow Gil Brandt and those guys bamboozled them. <laughs> <laughs> so you had no idea that trade was coming? Not at all. Not at all. And the thing about it is, because Gil, you know, Gil go, goes around to a lot of colleges and all that and, and uh, all, your banquets and all these stuff. And I, I was talking to him. He, he was like, oh, man, you probably – don't worry about it. He said, things are going to work. I said, but Gil, I'm being drafted so high, you know, I'm going to be, uh, it seems, sounds a little uh, unhealthy for me to run <laughs> run behind a, you know, a, 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 a what do we call it, the, uh, the new teams, what was it? T well, uh, Tampa Bay or Tampa the Bay. The expansion or, or, or teams. Or the expansion team. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I said, it sounds, a, uh, it don't sound too healthy. I said, you know, I would like to be, you know, get with an established team. Right. And he said, oh, man, it's going to be okay. I'm going to say, yeah, sure, right, Gil, because you know, Gil knows everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it worked out, man. Obviously, they had something working, man. And, 
And I was, I was, I was. I tell you what, I was like a little kid in the candy store on draft day, man. I when it happened, I could, I could not believe. Now, that. did you, did you get disappointed that uh, Tampa Bay took Ricky Bell instead of you? No, no. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want. I didn't want because you didn't want to go. I didn't to want to go to an expansion. An expansion team, and I wasn't right? caught up in being the first person picked. To, I knew I was going to be picked high, you know, right. because I had an outstanding career at the University of Pittsburgh, and that's all, you know, the scouts and everybody were talking. You know, he's going to go high. He's going to go high. So I, I knew I'd go high, but uh, you know, coming here was just quite a surprise. So for those of you that might not remember, the Cowboys ended up trading their first round pick. Uh, which was quite lower, and three second-round picks yeah. to move up to the number two pick in the draft. You know, and, and they took Tony, and so when you heard that, what was your initial reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get up and start uh, dancing? Oh, man, I tell you what, I just had a big old smile on my face, and I said, I can't, I can't. Because, you know, obviously, my, being born and raised in, in the Pittsburgh area, I was I was hoping, you know, at my last banquet that I, I had attended, there, the Dapper Dan banquet there in, in, in Pittsburgh, uh, before the draft, and I said, and I, I, I kind of reached out to Mr. Rooney. I said, Mr. Rooney, I tell him, I tell him how much I love Western PA and being a, a Pittsburgher, and I love the Steelers. And I said, please don't let me go. Uh huh. You know, and uh, you know, he a big smile and all that. But th from my understanding, they they were trying to do something. But you know, they was just at the beginning of Franco Harris's career. Right. Franco and uh, and uh, Rocky Blair, and that was a good tandem that they had up there. So, but that didn't work out. But I tell you what. It was all Everything it, it all turned out, it all turned out right, thank, and the Cowboys needed a running back, yes, right? Yes, they Kelvin did. Hill had left, yeah. and uh, Dwayne Thomas was gone, yeah. and that was one of the things that uh, looked like they were missing. It, it was it was it was the thing that they were missing was the the, the, the running game, and uh, it was like it was like uh, it was made in heaven, man. You know, it's like a nice nice glove. Man. You know, it's I wanted all to, I had to do is try it on, <laughs> work it out a little bit. <laughs> You know, I, I wanted to remind myself, I, I went and printed out the rest of the first round that year, like mm -hmm. the guys drafted after mm -hmm. you, and it was like, oh, my goodness, th there wasn't much in that draft. No, it wasn't. I mean, it was it a couple yeah. players in that, I mean, at least in the first round anyway. Yeah, well, I don't think there's, m most of those guys uh, from that draft, I, I don't know if their careers, I don't think their careers uh, were very long. Well, let me see if you remember any of these names. So the guy drafted after you was the Eddie Edwards. No. No, right? Defensive end, uh, the Bengals took him. He was from University of Miami. Wow. After that, Marvin Powell, he was an offensive yeah, tackle. He played tackle. for a he, few he's, years, he's right? Yeah, Gary Jeter was a defensive Jeter player. Gary Jeter the player Giants. USC. Warren Bryant. Uh, Joe Bryant. Campbell. No. Wilson Whitley. Mike Butler. Wilson, I mean, Wilson, I Wilson Whitley was from Houston, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay, yeah. you remember him? Gary Green played for a little bit with the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Morris Towns was an offensive tackle. The Oilers. I mean, it was just yeah. like, wow. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Maybe that's why they said we better go and get who we want, because yeah. otherwise. Maybe, maybe that's why I got drafted so high. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, that was that was that was uh, that was uh, obviously worked out awfully well for you. So, so what we were talking about, we're going to hold that because I was going to say once people knew who you were, they start concentrating on you, and it probably yeah. gets a little more difficult because I think Zeke's fine to that now. We'll do that next after we get back. This is the Cowboys Legend Show on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Mickey Spagnola, Tony Dorsett, and we'll continue here in a moment. We. Tattoos. It's not you, and it's not me. 
Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. SWBC Mortgage. For more than 40 years, SWBC has been helping people, companies, and financial institutions prepare to win in Texas and across the country. Visit SWBC.com to learn more. And we're back on our Dallas Cowboys legend show here at Cowboys Club in at the Ford Center. I'm Mickey Spagnola, and with me, Hall of Fame running back Tony Dorsett. Always good to have him here. And uh, remember, if anybody has a question for Tony, anything you want to talk to him about, fire away. Smacker's got the wireless mic. Get her attention. Raise your hand. Yell at her. Uh, she'll come running. So we left off here, Tony. So when people figured out who you were, how much tougher did it get to run the football? Well, obviously, it, it, it got a little tougher. Uh, and and I got to think about it back then, you know, spearing and all that kind of stuff was still – Legal, right? And uh, you talk about some dirty players, man. Um, I got a lot of cheap shots uh, at, at me, and and I could understand it, but I just thought some of these, at, 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 you know, taking these cheap shots the way some of these guys were taking them. I said, man, this is a way to ruin somebody's career. And I said, I can't, I just can't, I, I can't fathom doing something like that to another another athlete, you know, in his career. I mean, you want to get him out of the game, you want to slow him down, whatever you got to do, but doing doing some stuff that's outright dirty um i just i just had, I had no patience for that and that's why at times i got into a lot of altercations <laughs> because <laughs> guys were hitting me late and doing this and doing that or being in the power man i've been trying to pull my eyes out of my out of my so out of the socket and it was it was just crazy man but um it was a different time part, because part that was game. kind of accepted as part of the game trying yeah, to knock guys out right exactly exactly and 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 i, I could understand that um especially being back in that that era uh, I understood that th they they knew that uh, when you come with the playing Dallas Cowboys, part of the offense obviously is the rushing game, and, and I was the focal point, and so I knew they were going to, you know, try to get me out of the game and try to make things easier for them. How did your teammates accept you as a rookie coming in, national <laughs> champion, Heisman Trophy winner? Uh, did they did well, they razz you? Did they you know what was it like? No, I I think a lot of them um, tried wanted to try to learn learn me no get to know me because of the fact that I was I was pretty introverted. I was a little <laughs> quiet at times, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, and, I, I and know. You know. I was just trying to I was just trying to fit in get in where I could fit in. And everybody, you know, the media was going out, you know, talking about this, that, and the other and everything that I did, if I was out socially, it was it was news, it was it was this, it was that. And um uh, Coach Landry, I tell you one of the best things that ever happened to me was uh when Coach Landry pulled me into his office again and said you know, after about the around the tenth game of the season, he says, "You know, we've um, expected you to be a starter by now, and you know it's just not happening." And he told me some of the reasons why it wasn't happening, and the reason was one of the big reasons was because I got down on myself. I wasn't starting. Some games I played very little, very little time, and I was like, and then the media was like making me like, and when I when I did get some time, then it was something spectacular supposed to happen. I said, "You know." Guys, you got. I got to get into the flow. I got to get a feel for the defense. I say, yeah, some games something's going to happen, uh, and then for the most part, it, it doesn't work like that. And uh, but um, Coach Landry got me in. He said, hey, um, when he told me, you know, you, we expected you because I said earlier that I, I got down on myself, and I I had made I had made I'd already made up my mind. I'm going to wait to next year, and I'm going to go to training camp. I'm going to win me a damn starting <laughs> position. But he says, hey, we thought you would be starting now. I said, coach, he said, well, you got to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. At practice. I said, coach, why did it take you so long? <laughs> 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 man, I went to practice, man. I was gung-ho. I was running and ripping and doing everything that I normally would do uh, when I was a collegian. Uh, but I, like I said, I got down on myself, and I, I just I was banking on the next year. So that had to be kind of a dream season for you. You're, you're a rookie, second-round pick. You come to the Cowboys. Uh, uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Second don't, don't pick in the draft. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to demote, demote you. I didn't want to demote you there. <laughs> and you go to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. Hey, you man. figured that's just kind of the way things oh, work in the NFL? Man, let me tell you something. You're talking about a guy that was on a whirlwind. Um, I just left the University of Pittsburgh. We won a national championship. I won the Heisman Trophy, and I come here as a rookie. Um, we go to what quote unquote the um, the, the football's biggest game, the Super Bowl, 
and against the Denver Broncos, and we end up winning. Uh, man, I was like, are you talking about a guy that was that was riding high? And I said, you know, I said, there's nowhere else I can go but but down. I said, I got to start preparing for that. I said, but, <laughs> you know, we are, we're not going to win a Super Bowl every year, um, uh, but we did go to the playoffs every year. But the thing about it was um, uh, just learning that experience and experiencing that as a rookie and being able to become a national, ch- uh, a, a world champion in, in the National Football League was that was quite awesome. Man. Was, Can you believe that this is 40 years since the, all this? Man, don't you, what you talking about? I'm not, I'm, what you talking about? I I'm not that old. 40 years since my rookie year? Woo! 40 years. Wow. Well, I guess I'm, I'm married. Now I've got children. <laughs> <laughs> I got a freshman in college, man. It's like, wow, man. It's, the days go by. The years go by. Yeah. Uh, the fortunate thing for me, you know, is I'm still healthy and, 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 and able to, you know, have some fun with my kids and my wife. So, one of the neat things that happened, um, well, I guess about a month ago, is when the Cowboys constructed this uh, Ring of Honor walk uh, outside yeah. uh, the Ford Center here and uh, got all of you guys together. What was that like for you, not only to kind of see your number out there, but also have all the guys in the Ring of Honor together again? Well, uh, for, once, it, for one thing, it was very touching. Yeah. You know, and some of the guys that uh, obviously in the Ring of Honor were – before my time, before my era, and several of them are obviously during my time. But just to see the guys, it's, it's always good to to get to the guys and see how they're doing, uh, the fellowship and all that. And, uh, so it, it was it was a great time. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, um, Mr. Jones, I'll tell you, he, I, I can't – this man does so many wonderful things. He's done so many wonderful things for the National Football League. And to get the guys – and he could have started something – didn't have to be with the guys in the past, but obviously probably the right thing to do to have the guys in the past. But just to see him, the way he's handled the success that he's had with the Dallas Cowboys, because I, I remember very distinctly when he first came in about about the Cowboys. I was like, I was probably one of the, the more apprehensive guys uh, um, about what was going to happen with him. That's then. a very polite uh, word to yeah. use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, and I tell you that he. Boy, I tell you, he, I've never seen an owner more passionate about his football or his, his sports franchise than Mr. Jones. He does a great job. Um, he does everything first class. And, uh, and you, as a player, that's what you want. So when he arrived here, that was the first year you you were out, right? You finished yeah. in yeah, Denver finished after 88. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so that was your first, I don't know if you announced an official me. retirement or I never, not. I never did. You never did, right? I never did. I didn't yeah. think so. I didn't remember a I press conference or anything. I just walked away. So that was the, yeah, that was your first year out. But yeah, I was thinking when I saw this, it's like 40 years. So when you guys, when you took pictures out there, mo- most of those guys in the Ring of Honor, you played with, right? Yes. I mean, Don Perkins was probably one of the few that did Don not. Don and uh, uh, Neely and... Uh, Leroy Joy. Well, and, and those, yeah. Leroy was gone already. He yeah. had, and yeah, Bob yeah. Lilly, they had yeah. just retired, just 74, retired. 75. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and then Meredith, obviously, yeah. not here. But, yeah, but so did you know about Don Perkins? Did you know anything about him before you yeah, got I, to I the watched him from Yeah, af- I watched him from afar, you yeah. know, up, up in Pittsburgh. Um, um, I, was, uh, I was a Cowboy fan, believe it or not, but uh, – Obviously, my heart, and my number one team was the black and gold, the Pittsburgh Steelers, because I grew up as a kid, and I w- that's right. what I wanted. I mean, I, we, University of Pittsburgh, right down the street from them. Uh, the Rooney family was was did such a great job with those guys and drafted and, and just everything. You just if you're in that area, you you want to be a Steeler, right? But I tell you what, man, when I got drafted by the Dallas Cowboys, I uh, I tell you what, man, I I couldn't have been any happier. Uh, football player. There's nobody in that draft that year, especially when you had the rumors saying that it's going to be Seattle or Tampa Bay. And, and obviously Tampa Bay had the rights to Ricky Bell and Seattle had my rights. And for me to end up with the, the Dallas Cowboys, a team that from afar, I, I, I love their style. And so I said, man, I can fit right in. So do you, do you come out here and look at your number? Say, oh, there's well, my no- show everybody. Look, this is what because your kids now that are a little bit younger didn't get a yeah. chance to yeah, see my, you my, play. My, my kids, they they, uh, they love that. I I don't come out very often. Yeah. to do that kind of stuff. But uh, when we're here, 
it, it surely makes you feel good, man, to see you, you being recognized in, in the manner that Mr. Jones has recognized uh, the players uh, that are names are out there. So uh, it's it's a good feeling, man. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I, I, if I was out there, I, I, I can't remember who said it. It was Drew. Or, it might have been you. You said, well, I know why I want to be buried now when they saw <laughs> the number out here. Yeah. I mean, it's like a yeah. memorial monument to yeah, you, you know? I mean, as I said previously, you know, when Mr. Jones does something, he does it first class. And he, he, he went all out. I, 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 I did not expect to see what I saw on that day. I, I just thought, you know, we're gonna, our name is going to be up on the – you know, up on the wall. Yeah, the, like at the stadium, plaque, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. up on the wall. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's pretty Ooh, cool. That's pretty well, this cool. is pretty cool to have Tony Dorsett with us on our Cowboys legend show. I'm Mickey Spagnola. Tony's going to be here for at least another half hour with us, and we'll be right back here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Cowboys Legends Show, broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. SWBC Mortgage. For more than 40 years, SWBC has been helping people, companies, and financial institutions prepare to win in Texas and across the country. Visit SWBC.com to learn more. And we're back on our Cowboys Legends Show. Mickey Spagnola with Hall of Fame running back Tony Dorsett here at the Cowboys Club. Good to have everybody here with you out of way guys in the hall of fame now that doesn't happen every day that you run into somebody it's not only in the ring of honor uh but in the hall of fame and smacker i think you told me you had someone that uh had a question yes driscoll has a question uh tony uh we rode up the elevator together and and we had the tony dorset elevator did you notice that your pictures in the <laughs> elevator no, I didn't. No. <laughs> but, 
I didn't notice it on, on this trip, but I, I did know I, I, uh, on one of my previous visits that uh, they had a portrait of me that, that in one of the elevators, but I didn't recognize it. Uh, that, that I was, was just trying to get up here so I could get to Mickey. It was staring at you. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere you turn, there's a Tony Dorsett something or the other here. That's a good thing. Right? Jeez. I think we have another question. Smacker, what do you got? Yep, here's Keller. Tony, um, let's talk a little bit about something that I'd like to talk about, and that would be can you share a story back in the old times at Thousand Oaks, California, something that was fun that you can share that was funny that happened during your time back then? Ooh, oh, Thousand man. Oaks. Oh, man. That would yeah. take up the whole show, I bet. Well, uh, no, but I, we had some, some real funny things take place, but, you know, because of the fact that, you know, it's been so long ago, it's kind of hard for me to remember, but uh, um, I, I can just uh, remember, you know, the things that we did in the locker room uh, were pretty outrageous, uh, and we had, a we had a lot of fun, and, 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 and the thing about it is, you know, I never thought that the, the NFL would be have characters like we had the characters on our team. I thought everybody and everything was serious. But there was a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Uh, and we, we had an area, uh, we called it Ghetto Row uh, because it was all black players and, and over there for Forrest and Abrams before, before we moved out to Valley Ranch. And, and that area uh, was quite an area. There was a lot of uh, uh, jabbering going on and everybody talking a lot of smack. But it was the funny thing about it was Coach Landry, Coach Landry, would, that, that part of the locker room, anytime he was walking past that way, he was like, <laughs> 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 he, he would not acknowledge nobody at, at that time. So we, and every now and then, uh, hey, Coach, 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 what's going on? Come on, come, 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 tell me something. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't like care for that too much. But, but that was the thing, man. We, you know, we, uh, we had a lot of good, a lot of characters on the team, but uh, we had a coach, obviously, who was very, very serious, and um, you couldn't do too many things and, and get away with it uh, with him. But in that locker room, it was to be quite. It was quite interesting to see some of the things that went down. Now I can't publicly <laughs> <laughs> talk about it. So you brought up the locker room, Forrest and Abrams, compared to what they've got here. <laughs> well, it's like, what can I say, man? They've gone to like that's like the outhouse. To the penthouse, <laughs> and, it's, and, and, and that's unrealistic. I mean, because when you talk about Forrest and Abram, when I came to, to to the Dallas Cowboys, obviously elated as being the second person picked in the draft, and when I saw that prac that locker room over at that practice field, I was like, my face dropped. <laughs> I was like, this is the NFL. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. I don't know if you, if, you, if any of you people out here. Uh, uh, remember that, or, or around, or, or were around at that time. But it was like it was a, a building, a single-story building, with it had a tin roof on top of it. It was, I, I, I just can't. And then we had we had this fence that was all made out of metal and stuff. I don't. I, it seems like they just went to the scrap yard and put this together. And I was like, wow, man, this is the Dallas Cowboys. I was I was shocked. I mean, because you know, coming from the University of Pittsburgh, we had new facilities, we had this and that. But you know, this is the NFL. This is the best of the best. It don't get any better. And to see the way uh, the facilities that we had was just it was a little discouraging. The first time I have told this story before, when I first time I went out there, so it had been like '84, uh -huh. and uh, they told me where it was, gave me the address, uh -huh. and so they said now. You're not going to recognize it. There's no sign. Just look for the fancy cars. <laughs> and I swear, yeah. I was going right by it until yeah. I saw where the cars were yeah. parked. And I said, this is the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, That's, it was amazing, you know, because, you know, you, you, you look at all the, the national attention that the team gets and the, and the franchise has gotten. And it was just, you would just expect, I mean, I mean, I just thought that when I'm going to the NFL, it's going to get bigger and better. Uh, when I went to the NFL, it got it got a little bit worse, a lot worse. Uh, but you know, we made we made um, we made things work for us. Uh, one of the good things though I, I liked about it was we had the grass field. 
and uh, I hated practicing and playing on, on turf all the time. Especially that turf too much, back too much, then, too much right? Too wear and tear. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, my God. Or <laughs> Texas Stadium. I, it was like it was like running out on uh, on the streets. I mean, it was like asphalt. It was very hard. A lot of guys ended their careers because of that that turf, or, or, or the seams were not put together real good. And sometimes you get your foot caught in there, and rip your knee, tear everything up, and it was it was just a bad place. Tear your skin up too, right? Uh, oh, oh, all the burns. Oh, let me tell you, I've never had so many brush burns in my life. You know, I couldn't wait to to get onto to some, some grass or something, but. But it, it, you know, it comes with the territory. But now they got everything so much. Be- I, do they get burned anymore? On, I don't on, think on so. That's not, that stuff's pretty soft yeah, right now. Yeah. And and I suppose like the locker room here, you don't have the little uh, drying machine up there for your <laughs> shoulder pads to <laughs> s- sit in. Oh man, let me tell you something. Our our, our locker room, that practice field was ro- roach infested, <laughs> rat <laughs> infested. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. And man. Tex wasn't cooking you it lunch was, every day? He wasn't cooking lunch every day. There was no way. You know, you go across the street to Tom Thumb and try to get get into to the line there and see if you can get something to eat or a Burger King. Uh, and I bet you guys ate real healthy, too, huh? Sure. <laughs> All right, that's Tony Dorsett. I'm Mickey Spagnuolo. We're going to take an early break and get my partner, Bill Jones, uh, on the show with us. We'll continue with the Dallas Cowboys legend show here in a moment. We. Introducing us to a new thing BC Mortgage, Dallas Cowboys Legends Show. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. 
And the Cowboys Legends Show is brought to you by SWBC Mortgage. For more than 40 years, SWBC has been helping people, companies, and financial institutions prepare to win in Texas and across the country. Visit SWBC.com to learn more. And I am Bill Jones, now joining the show with Mickey Spagnola and Tony Dorsett. Hello, Mickey, as Tony gets back up here to I the w- desk. I was just getting ready to say, I said, I don't know if this is a fair trade. I got Bill Jones and no Tony Dorsett. <laughs> <laughs> show went downhill in a well, hurry right went there. way downhill. Well, I welcome. W- I know you were busy. I was taping the Jason Garrett show in the TV studios here. Hello, Tony. Uh, how, how are you? How are you? Doing very well. Doing good. very well. Good, good, good you Rick, can make it, man. Mickey <laughs> <laughs> I get paid to say whether I show up the last fi- I get paid nothing whether I show up the last 15 minutes or the whole hour. Uh, but I understand uh, we have Smacker here as well. Smacker Miles has the wireless microphone. Why don't we send it out to Smacker, who uh, I think has a fan here with a question for Tony D. Yes, I do. Here's Drew. Hi, Mr. Dorsett. Um, do you have a fantasy football team? Uh, Drew. I, I like I like that name. My name is my name is my middle name is I'm Anthony Drew Dorsett. That's a good name. Um, fantasy football. I never never really got involved with fantasy football. I don't know much about it. And you know I don't play or gamble or bet or anything. All right, we've got another question over there. I think. But why? <laughs> <laughs> he was looking for but some why? advice. Oh, you want advice? <laughs> oh, man. Keep your money in your pocket. <laughs> Here's Ethan. What was your favorite moment in the NFL? That was going to be my first question. That's Very good. good. I, I tell you, uh, going to the Super Bowl, you know, I I just always fantasize, you know, when I was in, uh, not as a, at your age because I never kn- knew I was going to even go to college at that time. But, but when I was in college, I, you know, I said, you know, that would be great, man, to go to a Super Bowl. And for it to happen, my rookie year, and not only just my rookie year, we went two years in a row, man. I got real spoiled. I thought it was this thing we all, man, this is great, man. We go to the Super Bowl every year, <laughs> but unfortunately, obviously, it's it's a it's a tremendous feat, first of all, to 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 get to a point where you can go to the Super Bowl, but yet alone go there two years in a row was was quite quite um, uh, quite astonishing for me, and I, I I really enjoyed it because. You know, I'll never forget that first uh, first Super Bowl. <coughs> and, you know, you get a lot of guys and guys that have been there tell you the stories and this, that, and the other and, and say, man, you got you to gotta cherish this because you never know if you're going to get back again. And trust me, you know, um, after going, by, going back to back and, and having some of the players that we had and the talent that we've had here uh, of those other years that we still couldn't get back. And it just goes to show you, you know, when you, when you get that opportunity – you cherish it, and I, I cherish it a lot. I mean, I got, I got, I got one. I got one. I got a Super Bowl, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, did, how how special was it then to go back the next year and play against the Steelers? Well, I tell you what. Now, you're talking about a dream come true. I mean, I, you know, when I came out of college, and you know, I grew up in Western PA, 30 minutes from the city. Uh, every kid in, in Western PA wanted to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, then I got to the University of Pittsburgh, and, you know, we had that great team that we had there, won a national championship. And the Steelers used to come down in the off season and work out with us, you know. And, you know, I was Joe Green, L.C. Greenwood, the White White, all these guys, man, Franco Harris, Rocky Blair, Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan. I mean, I go on, on, on. It was just it was wonderful. But, you know, just some of the insight that we could, we could get, we got from those guys, um, uh, I, I just, I tell you, man, I, I was, I was, I was, I thought I died and went to heaven, man, because I, you know, I, I had the opportunity to go to, you know, a, a local school and then the local team that I really, 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 really loved and get the opportunity to play with those guys, work out with those guys, pick their brain. It was a wonderful time. And then you got to play against them. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vicky bringing uh, up uh, the best uh, stuff. But let me, let me tell you, because <laughs> you know, we had, they had some players. And I, 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 this is when I gained, I, you know, j- you know, you, there's a lot of great players and a lot of things that touch you uh, the, the, your career or some things you may do or somebody does something. And I'll never forget, you know, because the Steelers, uh, 
were really, 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 really roughing me up, you know, and they would, they would, they would get to, I mean, I mean, uh, attack on me, then after, after, you know, they got some guy somehow push it, they put, get his head on my, his hand on my head and use my head to help push him up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, and I got really mad, really upset. And I'll never forget um, the class, the class act that, that Joe Green was at that time. Joe Green. Because Joe was their the, the captain, and Joe, mean Joe Green was mean Joe Green. Nobody wanted to mess with Joe. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, Joe said, he jumped up in front of these guys. He said, tackle him and just tackle him. Leave him alone. Don't do no nope. dirty stuff. He said, don't do any of that no more. He said, he's one of us. All right, Mr. Green, I like that. <laughs> but you know, I you know, I had nothing. I gained nothing but the utmost respect for him. Just you know, getting all getting his teammates and tell them just leave him alone, tackle him, and leave him alone. Wow, that's leadership. I, I, there. You're talking about leadership, but you're talking about did they listen? Oh yes, they did. Yeah. Oh yeah, they. they, they, they <laughs> Joe talk, mean Joe Green. Joe, yeah. Joe talk, people listen. <laughs> See, have you ever had a chance to have a conversation? Now he lives yeah. here now oh, yeah, with yeah. him about that. Oh yeah, I talked. Talk yeah. with him and, and Agnes's wife about that, and uh, you know, and, and I told him what it meant to me. I mean, it uh, really touched me because you know the opposition. I mean, that's you very seldom hear something like that coming from the yeah. opposition. They're always trying to get on, get in your head. Do this or do that to you just to slow you down. Yeah. And really, uh, you look at the, the first two years of your NFL career, you actually went back to back to back because your last year at Pitt, you won the national championship too. Hey. So you had the ultimate basically yeah. three years running there. Yeah, that was, that's what I'm saying. You know, that's, you're mm -hmm. talking about being spoiled. And Heisman Trophy and you all know, that. You, you know, and, and the thing, you know, about all of this, as I said earlier, you know, when you get there, you get that opportunity, you cherish it because you never know if you're going to get back again. And and I tell you, we had some guys, we had some good players on our teams a after those after that back to back, but we never got back there. Mm -hmm. Remember, we got we would get to the championship games. We went to four NFC championship games, and we never got back. You've been able, oh, well, since 40 years since winning the Heisman Trophy, and then see, he reminded <laughs> you 40 years <laughs> too, by the way, and then. Uh, 1994, you go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the College Football Hall of Fame. What What do you enjoy most going back to? I mean, it, is it the uh, Heisman Trophy stuff or the Pro Football Hall of Fame stuff? Wow, I mean, it's, it's really hard to, to it's really hard to say. But but I tell you one thing about it, um, about both of those eras. I mean, my college, I tell you, winning the national championship because when, when we came when we came in back then, they had unlimited. Uh, scholarships. Mm -hmm. I, it was probably, and a matter of fact, it was because of John Majors had over a hundred guys on scholarship at the University of Pittsburgh. My freshman year, they came in from uh, what, uh, uh, wherever they came from, was it Tennessee? I don't know. He yeah. went to Tennessee. He, he went, went to Tennessee, to Tennessee right? Yeah. But uh, they came in, and we had a hundred over one hundred guys on scholarship. And but let me tell you. Uh, they worked. They worked the guys. They had to win. we we the men out for the boys and find the talent and this down the other in Western Pennsylvania. Had a lot of guys from there. But um, uh, uh, what was my question? Well, yeah, and uh, but, uh, I just forgot it. The, the, the well, the other thing <laughs> is on that coaching staff. You had yeah, that's what like I was going to ask. Like a who's who of coaches on that coaching staff. Yeah, at Pitt. they did. You know, uh, you, you know, Coach Cheryl. Uh -huh, Jackie there. Cheryl. And I, and I tell you a story about Jackie. Jackie. Jackie Cheryl. Um, came to my house when when unit when John Majors and his staff came in to Western PA, uh, they had heard about me and I was what they call a, a blue chip recruit, you know, one of the top uh, high school uh, players in in, in Western in, in Pennsylvania or in the East or all over the country. Heck like the that. country. Let's just <laughs> go with the all country. Right. Yeah. But so they they came in and, and I, I, I I can I can I can can not thank Coach Majors and Jackie, sure enough, Jackie, Jackie was the guy that, whenever I had anything that was going on, because I was pretty introverted as a as a freshman, I was very quiet, and everybody was trying to find out who is this Tony Dorsett guy, who is this Tony Tony Dorsett, I guess at that time, <laughs> who's this Tony Dorsett guy, who is this Tony Dorsett guy, and I, and I, I said, you know, and after we had our first scrimmage, everybody figured out who he was, uh, because I had a, a great scrimmage, but um, uh, just still to see the type of work. That Coach Majors, Jackie Sherrill, and their staff put in and convinced us that 
you know, I went to Pitt. Um, Pitt had only won one game a year for the previous 10 years. Wow. And uh, so they were, you know, everybody beat up on Pitt, you know. And uh, so they got a lot of pride instilled in us. And we, we got out there. And obviously, we didn't know as freshmen, but uh, uh, a lot of the upperclassmen were telling us about the things and how things were going. Uh, but um, for us to turn that around in four years, and I'll never forget, like I said, we got together as freshmen. We said, hey, before we leave here, we made a pact amongst ourselves. We're going to win a national championship. And sure and enough. To, and to see that come to fruition, man, I'll tell you, man, unbelievable. We got we got better every year. We worked harder every year, and we were always trying to. That final common denominator was we're going to win a national championship. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, we did. That I think Smacker's got another question from the fans out here. Yes, Steve came all the way from Vancouver, and he has a question. Uh, Mr. Dorsett, thanks uh, for taking the questions. Uh, what's your feelings on the uh, the kneeling during the anthem? How's that going? Wow. Woo, you want me to touch that? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I have no comment. You know, I, you know, uh, I understand. I understand both sides of it, but I, I, I can't. I can't make a comment on that. Uh, but I. Opinionated uh, Tony Dorsett. I, 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 I can't make an opinion. I can't make a statement on that. But but I tell you, uh, I just I hope everything works out for everybody. All right. So, what question do fans ask you more than any other? Uh, where do I live? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you know, everybody. They want, for the most part, people just want to know how was it to work under Coach Landry, under tutelage of Co Co Tom Landry. Because Coach Landry um, was, uh, I don't know, it's kind of some mis mysterious, mystic type of guy. And, and people didn't, a lot of people didn't get to know him. Uh, and he went, and that was because that's the way he wanted it to be. And uh, I, I tell you, as when I was, uh, here I am as a rookie, right? And we had these veteran players that were there that, because I, I came in town and said, Tom Ledger can't do this to me. Tom Ledger, Tom Ledger ain't my daddy. <laughs> he, can't, he can't tell me what to do. But let me tell you something. Mr. Ledger said, he said, I can't tell you what to do, but I can sure make you do it. <laughs> in, other, in, other wor in other words, it's, he put them fines on you, boy. He's like, you, you listen. You say, okay, you got me. You got me. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I just, it, I had nothing but admiration for him. I, I had never seen a head football coach that was as knowledgeable as Coach Landry. He put in both our offensive uh, strategy. He put both in our defensive strategy. He was, the, I guess, the, the owner or the, the guy that came up with the flex defense. Mm -hmm. He was just such a football, so so intelligent football wise, and he and he always knew. And that's why you you would never people would say, "Well, he never smiles. He never does this." Coach Landry was always thinking ahead. You know, he was always trying to you know figure out what you're trying to figure out. That he might do, so he doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought fans might ask you about the 99-yard run. Well, I, I tell you, I do get a lot of questions about that, um, and and for most people that don't know that, the reason why we were on it, we only had 12. I mean, 12. 10, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 10 men. On, well, I said 12. <laughs> <man. I'm> <laughs> we had uh, 10 men on the field was because of me, and. I had came in, I heard the play being called on, on the on the sideline and I thought it was our, our single back formation and I ran out on the field and told Robert Newhouse because he was they were that he he set this all up for me anyway because mm -hmm. he he muffed the uh, the kick the kickoff <laughs> <laughs> he muffed the kickoff he, did, he muffed the kickoff and, and so we're down at the one inch yard line I'm like oh man I, and the one the one okay whatever. It was we were really close to the end zone. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so man, I said, okay, and I heard the play, and I was like, man, I really didn't want to be in there because I figured at that at that point in that stage of the field, the, you, you, your defense knows that you're not going to get real fancy. You're going to just try to push it out of here just to get some breathing room so you can try to do something with your offense. And so, man, I ran on that play. I said, I said first thing on my mind, I said, I started tight. I tightened up my chin strap. I mm -hmm. said, because you know what? I'm, I'm going to get one hell of a hit. I'm going <laughs> to tell you, hold on right there. Yeah. We've got to...
bow out of the yeah. radio network, but we can continue okay. and finish on the story for everybody here. All right, Tony, Cowboys. we appreciate you joining us here on the Cowboys Legend Show. Hey, good a record that will Thanks never be broken, you. 99 yards and a half. And the Tony rest of the said. story is coming up. <laughs> That's right. And we thank all of you for joining us here on the Cowboys Legend Show. We will see you again next week when Mickey will have another great guest. Randy White. All right. Team. And at Winstar, we love Dallas Cowboys fans because they're the world.